Broadcast in real time, live TV is almost old hat in the era of social media. But as a way of recounting world events as they happen, it can be dramatic, compelling and uncontrollable. Anything can happen. I'm a reporter at WZRB and I'm always on the lookout for a positive... In 1974 in Sarasota, Florida, the worst did. When a local television reporter who suffered long-term mental health issues shot herself live on air, claiming it was a protest at being asked to sensationalize the journalism she held dear. I have to do different work. We need higher ratings. She is, in, in some small sense, famous on the internet as being on the sort of top 10 most shocking things that ever happened on live television because she took her life on live TV. She said, in keeping with the network's desire for blood and guts television, here's a first and attempted suicide. So it, it's a sort of act of, of terrorism almost in that sense, because is, she is making it political and she is making a comment on the thing that she very much didn't want to do. She was someone who was under constant pressure from the higher-ups in a small network to create juicy reporting if she was going to be successful. It's believed only a few hundred people watched Christine Chubbuck's death live on TV. The nature of the internet means these days suicides live on Facebook have been watched by people around the world. I think if it happened now, I, I, I think it would be inescapable. And that, that's actually rather disturbing to think about. I, mean, I suppose it's true that now people do kill themselves on Facebook Live and yes. they have difficulties getting the material off, you know, their relatives. Well, exactly. And, it, and one shouldn't have access to that footage and one shouldn't see it. I mean, in the film she says, can you record this? So there is a tape, right? Is that, is that what you understand? There's a tape somewhere? I understand there's a, a tape and I also understand that the family went to court and got it from the station and destroyed it. There's a lot of rumour and speculation, but I don't, I don't really want to get into that. I don't think anyone should see that, and we should respect the family's wishes and leave it alone. Otherwise, it is grisly and sensationalistic, and our interest in her is wrong. It's a simple concept, guys. If it bleeds, it leads. There's a reason this idea is catching fire in the culture right now. But he, they didn't show that, Mike. They, they cut out just before. If they'd had the guts to show the whole thing, they could have doubled their rate. The equivalent now would be clickbait. You know, what, what's the most shocking way you can describe a story so that someone will click on it and read the article so that you get more ratings or whatever, or whatever term you want to put in it. And I pledge to you tonight from this office that I will do everything in my power to ensure that the guilty are brought to justice. It's like, you know, the, the 1970s were sort of this, in many respects, the golden age of journalism, Watergate etc etc but it's also you know you've got for the first time there's extreme violence in people's homes on television because of the coverage of the Vietnam War and it really is that I think there are so many sort of things that are conflating and Christine's story sort of becomes emblematic of in many ways the fact that she asked for her show to be videotaped that day indicates to me premeditation she's plotting something Clearly, it's a timely story, because not just Hall's Christine, but another film about Chubbuck debuted at last year's Sundance Film Festival. No, 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 not, um, not the tape of her suicide, but any, anything at all, any sort of... I always think the thing about a, any, any piece of drama that's set in another time is that it, you know, it says something about the time in which it's set, but it arguably says something even more significant about the time that the decision to make it was. And... You know, when I think of 1974 in America, and I read a lot around this in preparation for this film, there's a real, there's a real sense of, of paranoia and um, uncertainty about where the world's going. You're coming out of the 60s with a sense of, you know, the stakes are life or death, and where are we going, and what's happening, and how is the world shifting? And I, I don't think that audiences right now are going to have a hard time relating to that <laughs> sensibility. As you know, I have a running war with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on Earth. <laughs> but we need to be vigilant, and the way we do that is through the press. And for it to be 
proper journalism that find you know that gives delivers us the information that we need in order to ha have a functioning democracy. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you get Gail? I thought she was meant to get some fresh flowers. Oh, yeah, I told her to. It must have slipped her mind. It slipped her mind. Well, I can't yeah. think about anything else. Sorry. So we're, we're, you're gonna have to. Uh, someone get some fresh. Flowers. For better or worse, Christine is a harbinger for a lot of things that we still, as a society, have a rough time talking about. Suicide, mental health. Ultimately, it's quite easy to humanise characters who do virtuous things, or even characters who have awful things happen to them and are victims of things, but remain sort of essentially good. It's crucial for artists to humanise people that, are, that we'd rather look away from or we'd rather just not really deal with. You know, put that person in a box and just label it monster or crazy or whatever and let's just not think about it. You know, that's the reason to make this film. Mm -hmm.